Good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Blackwell. And joining me now to go further in depth is Dr. Walid Ferris, Middle East expert and author of the book, The Lost Spring, U.S. Policy in the Middle East and Catastrophes to Avoid. Dr. Ferris, thanks so much for joining us right here on America's Forum. Let's get into your book. Your book references U.S. policy in the Middle East and catastroph catastrophes to avoid. So is the U.S. working with Iran a catastrophe to avoid? Well, this is the best intro I could have gotten this morning. Indeed, when I published the book early this year, I've, uh, I've referenced the, uh, the notion that we are heading towards catastrophes we need to avoid. We made uh, many uh, suggestions to Congress by, or the administration to avoid them. Actually, we did not. With ISIS and now with Iran, as the good senator was saying, uh, we are heading towards a catastrophe. That is a partnership that the Obama administration wants to establish, not just on the political level, but also on the financial level. And as the senator has mentioned, and that would be the most worrisome on the military level. Imagine that Washington and Tehran at this point in time will become partners, uh, you know, in the Middle East. You know, experts have said really that Iran needs us more than we need them. Would you agree with that? That's the argument that has been produced in Tehran. I go on Arab TV every day. Guess what I hear? Those experts or commentators or voices that are saying, oh, we don't need America, that's exactly the position of the Iranian regime saying, oh, we're not interested, you're interested in us, without us you cannot do it. That's precisely what they want. Now, of course, the United States, had, they, had the administration had a different uh, plan, had we intervened in Syria earlier, had we not left Iraq you know, that early, all that, had we done a different policy, we wouldn't have needed Iran. Actually, had we been smart enough in 2009, in June of 2009, we would have backed this huge revolution against the Ayatollahs in Iran. And just imagine, just imagine that Iran would have changed as of 2009. Then the battle of ISIS would have been much easier. Let's switch gears, talk a little bit about what happened in Turkey yesterday. Obviously, some troubling images involving those U.S. sailors in Istanbul. Uh, are your folks on the ground in the Middle East telling you that this is really indicative of what the Turkish people feel about the U.S. military, or was this just a couple of rebels that quite possibly were acting on their own? Good question, but I think it's in between. Uh, you know, I teach, uh, you know, uh, Turkish students among my international stu students. Uh, we do have connections inside Turkey and in the region. This is a little bit more complex. These students, these, you know, the attackers could have been Islamists, but I don't think so. Islamists meaning, uh, you know, from the party of, of the AK party. The two options would have been either jihadists, meaning those who are heading to Syria, but if they were jihadists, they would have killed the sailors. They would have had a different approach. The organization behind that is called the Youth Turkish Union. Now, this is the ultra-nationalist, but they have not done so for a long time. Now, don't be surprised, our sources are telling us that some of these organizations could have been penetrated and make sense by Iranian influence, because the goal of the Iranian regime is to create a super wedge between Turkey and the United States, so we cannot do anything about Kobani, anything in Iraq. Uh, that could have been the case, but of course we don't have full evidence at this point in time. On the topic of ISIS, unconfirmed reports say coalition airstrikes injured or possibly killed al-Baghdadi. What are you hearing about this, and just how much would that hurt the ISIS effort if al-Baghdadi, in fact, was killed? The Iraqi government is insisting that they have killed Baghdadi. Uh, Pentagon, our officials here in Washington are saying, we don't know, we don't think so. It's going to be easy to check. If in a few days, let's say a few weeks, he does not appear, then we'll start to raise the question. But there's more important than that. If he would have been killed, the jihadists are very systematic. They will immediately declare who is the next caliph. So to answer your second question quickly, if al-Baghdadi is killed, guess what? There will be al-Shami, there will be al-Halabi. I'm giving names of cities of potential individuals who will be declared the next caliph. Killing al-Baghdadi on the tactical level, of course, is important in this confrontation. It's not strategic, though. 15 seconds, conflicting reports. Kurdish forces are repelling ISIS advances. What are you hearing? We're hearing that the Kurdish forces in Kobani have been pushing back now that they are supported by the good elements of the FSA of Syria and the Peshmerga from northern Iraq. Yes, they are pushing the Kurds, but they need much more from the air and they need Turkey. All right, Dr. Ferris, we'll get more after the break. Thank you.